Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kenia Linton George. Thank you for joining me this evening as we discuss the paradox of ethical fashion. Now, I'm a fashion designer, but I studied philosophy. So we will not be looking at this topic from a socioeconomic, environmental, nor a political perspective. I believe philosophy allows us to delve deeper into understanding why we are the way we are as humans. We will examine this from a deontological, existential, and utilitarian perspective to understand why we are limited in balancing this paradox. Have you ever stopped to consider the impact of the choices of your clothes? Not the style, not the fit, but the cost of the choice of your clothing on the environment. Garment production has doubled since the year 2000, and it's expected to increase by 60% by the year 2035. We have shifted from two fashion seasons per year in the 1980s to now churning out an alarming 52 micro seasons per year to feed our insatiable appetite for more clothing. Forbes magazine reported that 92 million tons of textile waste ends up in the landfills every year and global emissions from the industry is expected to increase by 50% by 2030. Yet, large corporations are spending millions of dollars on PR campaigns to convince you to shop more. And consumers can't see the impact of this shopping on the environment. Now, how do we balance this paradox? We stand here in an existential crisis, standing in front of our wardrobe saying, I have nothing to wear. Dozens of dresses, dozens of shirts, yet I have nothing to wear. Gerber and Renro states that there's one thing that sets us apart from non-human animals, and it's that animals produce only and exactly what they need. Humans invariably produce more. We are creatures of excess. This is what makes us simultaneously the most creative and the most destructive of all species. But how do we balance this paradox? Some might be saying, well, I donate my old clothing, but what good are we doing the environment through our donations? Only 1% of donated clothing are actually recycled. Three out of five of your donated clothing ends up in the landfill. The United States is the number one exporter of used clothing around the world. And these clothes end up in developing countries and are sold for five to 10% of the cost of new clothing, stifling local fashion industries. But from a utilitarian perspective, somebody's benefiting. But how do we balance right action? Utilitarianism states that the right action is the action that brings about the greatest amount of good. But how can we balance this right action when it comes to sustainable fashion, ethical fashion, balancing the right and the good? Sidwick says we can balance this and understand this through intuition. Intuition will tell us that the correct action is the action that creates the greatest good for everyone. 
not just for me, because I will sit here and say, I want to buy 365 dresses per year. And I'd be allowed to do that because it's for my good and I can afford it. But a manufacturer could say, I want to sell 300 dresses per day or per minute. And that is essentially good. But how do we balance the right and the good? In what seems to be just a simple trade. Now, we are still in this existential crisis from a utilitarian perspective. Somebody benefits, but who really benefits and how can we balance this paradox? It takes 20,000 liters of water to create one kilogram of cotton. One kilogram of cotton. That's the equivalent to make one shirt and one denim trousers. Now, 20,000 liters of water can serve a family for up to a month. This is the cost of our clothing. This has left villages without water, but yet we stand in front of our wardrobe and say, I have nothing to wear. How do we balance this paradox? This brings me back to Kant's categorical imperative of using, ones, using one as a means to an end. We simply use another as a means to an end. And I think of my mentor, my late mentor, Kay Davitian, who worked in the factories in China and India and spoke to me of the numerous persons who worked for as little as a dollar a day so we can have limitless choices to stand in front of our wardrobe and say, I have nothing to wear. How do we balance this paradox of ethical fashion. You might be asking, what can I do as an individual now that will help to balance this paradox? You can simply demand more sustainable fabrics. Polyester is two to three times more toxic than cotton. 35% of the microplastics found in the ocean are from our laundry and textile waste. Now, we see where we've moved from one end of the pendulum to the other, where we've used to create sustainable fabrics that have a shorter lifespan, to now creating fabrics that are toxic, synthetic, but have a longer lifespan. These fabrics sit in the landfill for thousands of years. It will outlive you and your grandchildren. So we need to simply demand more sustainable fabric options. Now, polyester may not be the, the, the option, but neither might be cotton. We need to employ more technology for more sustainable options for our consumers. This could be bamboo, this could be linen, this could be hemp. But as consumers, we have the power to demand more from the manufacturers. We can't just accept what is given to us. Now, second, we need to know our manufacturers. We need to know our suppliers. Now, this fashion industry, we have coined many terms to ease the guilt and anxiety from shopping. And you hear it every day when you go into the malls. Ethical fashion, eco fashion, guilt free fashion, and the list goes on, all to lure you to shop more. But 43% of these sustainability claims 
are actually false. They're greenwashes. They're, they're greenwashing just to encourage you to shop more. So we need to read the transparency indexes that are published to understand which suppliers are actually conforming to sustainable practices and shop only with those suppliers. We have the power as consumers. We just don't realize. And the third option that you can do as an individual is to alleviate yourself of the anxiety that comes with this existential vacuum of excess and choice. Reduce, reduce your anxiety. Minimize your option, limit your choices. We are in a paradox. And we are the ones who can get ourselves out of it. If we look at the, the deontological ethics of using one as a means to an end, we would understand that we have a natural human duty and obligation to balance this paradox. Now, the call is on the consumer to make an aggressive shift towards sustainable options and force the hand of the manufacturers to supply this demand for more sustainable options. Until we see that shift, any sizable shift from any side of the spectrum, whether the producer or the consumer, essentially, we are two heads of the same beast. The manufacturer will keep producing and we will keep consuming and stand in front of our wardrobe and say, I have nothing to wear. Thank you.